Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We are the VML, sponsored by Wizards of the Coast and GLHF. Good luck, high five. My name is Nicole Callahan, also known as Lady of the Crease. I am joined here tonight by Kuro. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I just got back from a two and a half hour bus trip, and I'm ready to talk about some magic. <laughs> yes! If there's nothing to get you amped up, it's definitely a two and a half hour bus trip. And if you aren't amped up, you better get amped up because we're here. We made it. It's the new year. VML playoffs, top 32. We made our cuts. We started with a, a field of 128 players, our biggest ever season here in season eight. And we are in, so this would make it week number eight of our 10 week long Magic the Gathering Arena League. And I can't wait to get this going. We are going to showcase the talents of some amazing people of marginalized genders. Uh, and I am so ready to start these elimination rounds. Like, I can't wait to get into this. So uh, before we do, I just do want to mention again, we are sponsored by uh, Wizards of the Coast and GLHF. Make sure you check out Good Luck High Five. Um, Maria and Megan have the most fantastic podcasts. Give them, a, give them a shout out. They've been on the show before. Uh, they've done some guest casting with us and they are just phenomenal. So big thanks to Wizards and Megan and Maria for their support of our league. And let's let's talk some magic. Let's talk some elimination magic here. Let's take a look at this Ooh. metagame. This is quite a metagame. Now, see, in the past week, obviously, yes, we have, like I said earlier, this has been... Uh, of our biggest season yet, 128 players. So every week we open up our metagame slide and there's some very tiny pieces of pie. But this week you, sl you, you open it up and it's just like, oh my goodness gracious, that's a lot of Grixis. So we're staring here at almost half of, almost half the field brought get Grixis mid-range and there was a Grixis artifact set as well. So... <laughs> And there are definitely some striking similarities between Grixis mid-range decks and a couple of these other decks, but uh, that's to get into. What are your thoughts here on this metagame breakdown in this this first playoff round, Bruno? What do you think? Well, the elephant in the room of Grixis <laughs> is sort of there. I, I purposely put artifacts aside because I did think that the match, that particular strategy is much, it's very interesting and distinct from mid-range because it usually relies on Sahili such as that. I think a really notable thing here is that we don't have any green anywhere here. Unless the four-color mid-range deck has green and I'm not aware of it, there's absolutely no green to be seen on any of these lists. The most prominent colors that we're seeing is blue and probably red, yeah, because of those is-it decks. So I think it's really it's a really interesting way to visualize the state of standard as it is right now. Yeah, one of the biggest surprises to me, uh, because going into this week, I think a lot of people thought that Grixis was the deck to beat and decided if I can't beat him, then join him. But a lot of people d that decided not to beat them, there are some like self-proclaimed, you know, Grixis killers in like mono white mid-range or is it control or is it ramp that we've seen like, you know, people say, hey, this can be, this can be Grixis. But it looks like people didn't trust their playoff run to that thought that, that it could be Grixis enough that they said, now nah, I'm just going to play the best deck here. Um, and so I'm very surprised to not see more, more mono white mid range, no more sanctuary wardens and things like that. <laughs> yeah. I think this is the highest proportion of Grixis that we've seen so far. Highest proportion. Yes, uh, that yes. is for sure. And that definitely shows in our first matchup here of the night, we're going to be heading into a Grixis mid range mirror. Our first uh, competitor Niall Joan coming in our 32nd seed, just making it in, coming in second in uh, her division and bringing Grixis mid range. Uh, said happy to make the playoffs, you know, wanted to test around and decided that Grixis, even though on the draw, Grixis was the best choice here. So, any, any thoughts about uh, Niall Joan's list going in? Is there anything that stands out to you at all? Let me think. I think the main deck, Siphon Insight, is very interesting. I think that's really hinging on all the Grixis mirrors that are happening because the best part about Siphon Insight is when you're able to cast it against a deck that's either yours, so the mirror, or a deck that is extremely good to have a mirror against, such as Control. Um, the Counterspell Suite is going to matter quite a bit here because adding or subtracting a counter can make or break a game. For instance, this deck has three Make Disappears, one Negate in the main, one Negate in the side, two Disdains. 
Um, that's seven counters main uh, in the 75. And that may or may not matter depending on how many counter spells are in the other deck. Gotcha. And now for a little extra flavor, we asked each of our competitors this week what their favorite flavor text is. Now, I didn't put the card. That, but Niall Jones says her favorite flavor text is be like the sea, flow around that which is immovable for everything. range um an impressive run this season coming in at the top of the field again grixis mid-range deck and i see here you said how important siphon insight is in this matchup now uh we saw that niall joan had had a single copy of siphon insight in the main and one on the side Brittany has none in the main but four in the sideboard what are your thoughts Yes, so that might end up getting cited in specifically for this matchup to steal those Corpse Appraisers, to steal those Fables, to steal those Invoked Despairs for sure. Especially if you know that your opponent is going to be packing things like extra Disdainful Strokes and Negates. I'll have to keep careful track of the counter spells too. Notice that there's no main deck, um, I call them hard counters, the counters that are not per soft permission where you require to pay mana. There's only three Make Disappears in the main. That may matter for the first game, and then for the second game, uh, she might have to side in those negates and disdain. That's two negates, one disdain. Hmm. Two, two, two negates, two, two duresses, and disdainful strokes. So maybe being able to pick something up before it gets to that point. Uh, and we see Brittany's fla favorite flavor text is perfect. Now do it again. Oh, gosh. <laughs> is that double major? Uh, you know what? You have the correct set, I believe. It's uh, it it is Naven, Dean of Iteration. Oh, that was Dominaria. Oh, so I I don't even know the right set. So it's a good thing I'm not on the guessing side of these things. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, this is let's, torture, <laughs> right? <laughs> let's get into our first matchup here: our Grixis mid range mirror between. Brittany MTG, our number one seed, and Niall Joan, our 32 seed, will be on the side of Niall Joan. You see Brittany there at the top. And we are looking at some opening hands. Triple a braid, go for the throat, three lands, and all slow lands on the side of Niall Joan. What are your thoughts about this, knowing what your opponent is playing? Uh, I think having that much removal is just... Having the, uh, matchups like this are generally decided based on the amount of two for ones that you can get. Removal is very nice because it can prevent them from getting tempo, but if they're going to amass um, a card advantage, that's going to cause a lot of issues. All right. We see a mulligan to six, and Brittany starts us off with a tap land. Niall Joan going to tap land right back and pass the turn back to Brittany, who has. Corpse Appraiser, Fable and Mirror Breaker, a Make Disappear, and a Blood Tithe Harvester now on the battlefield. We'll see uh, some good-looking curve on the side of Brittany out of the gates. And we see the Siphon Insight. The, the one of Siphon Insight was the draw on Niall Jones' side. So we'll be able to see what that hits here as Niall Jones opted to play Ottawara over a land to be able to cast the Blood Tithe Harvester. So... Brittany's Blood Tithe Harvester getting in. Niall Joan down to 17. And Siphon Insight reveals a Reckoner, Bankbuster, and a Corpse Appraiser. There you go. You had called that card earlier. You know, taking those good cards, those value and card advantage cards out of Brittany's deck and putting it into exile. And yeah, that's quite absolutely. a start. I think, those corpse, I think those Corpse Appraiser is going to be especially important because... Oh, they took the Bankbuster. Okay, I think the Bank Buster is going to be important as well because that's going to be extra cards that they cannot get. For sure. Like being able to maintain card advantage, I have to imagine, is a 
a big deal in this matchup. We'll see as Niall Joan decides what her next play is going to be. It looks like flirting with the Blood Tithe Harvester could play the Bank Buster, but it's going to start off with the Harvester here. And we see a Blade Coil Serpent also in Niall Jones's hand. Now, Blade Coil Serpent is something that we've seen more as of late in these Grixis mid-range decks. What are your thoughts about that card in the mirror? It seems like a lot of people bring it in for the mirror. But it dies very easily to an abraid. But I'm not. I'm not sure. How, what, what, what do you think about Blade Coil Serpent in this matchup? I think it's especially important because it, it adds to that card advantage that I was talking about earlier. It's sort of like an extra copy of Invoke Despair, if you will. If you can make them discard two cards or you draw two cards, either way, you're messing with the something that is happening with the um, resource engine. However, this tempo for these creatures may be too much to handle. Yes, I, I see that as uh, we see Brittany really a commanding board presence here with a Corpse Appraiser and a Blood Tithe Harvester. Invoke Despair in hand, a Soul Transfer as a removal spell that hits just about anything, and a Fab Fable of the Mirror Breaker to keep building that card advantage. And Niall Joan being able to play just a tap land here and... Can't even play and activate the Bank Buster. Can siphon inside again, but is already at 14 life. That's starting to get down there. Yeah, I think this is definitely a situation where I would have wished to have gotten the Corpse Appraiser to at least have a blocker for some of these. Even if there was removal on Brittany's side, having some board presence. Because playing the Bank Buster here, you can't even do anything with it. You could have played it on tap land, but it's not good tempo. Yes, and we see at least the Siphon Insight will give Niall Joan some choices here. Speaking of choices, Brittany's got one to make right now, and it looks like gonna hold that Invoke Despair and get down <laughs> one of the best cards, one of the other best cards in Standard, one of the best cards printed in the past few years. Fable of the Mirror Breaker will come and bring a Goblin Shaman token with it as we see Siphon Insight, one of the top two cards. Another bank buster and a land. That doesn't feel too great. I would have been tempted to take the land just to guarantee the six on Serpent, but obviously uh, she drew a land, so it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, the, the classic play Fable and not Invoke to play around make dis disappear. That's what just happened here. Um, and here's that Invoke Despair. Yes, and... Unfortunately, this is Niall Joan at 8 life. Uh, so if Brittany does sacrifice this 2-2 Goblin Shaman and the Fable still staring down 6 damage and with the Invoke Despair in Brittany's hand and Niall Joan entirely tapped out, I think that might be it for game number 1. Yeah. I think, I don't know if it's irony or if it's just funny. If, if Niall Joan had kept that first hand that had 4 removal spells in it, she probably would have been fine because of the way that Brittany was playing this game. Yes, it's uh, that's one of those. Could have seen land, so right. hindsight is 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 you know twenty twenty. As you know, you never know with she, you know does it. You look at a braid, you're like a braid doesn't kill Shieldred, and you panic and ship it back, and then it real, and then your opponent just plays a bunch of X threes and X twos, and you go oh, no, <laughs> that would have been good. And we look oh. at the sideboard here. I like this. Taking out Siphon Insight is interesting. Taking out almost all the Make Disappears. That actually makes sense to me. I usually do that too when I'm playing Control to psych out the opponent because they think that I still have it. So they'll still play around it even though I don't have it. It's like, well, kept up two untapped that you didn't have to. Yes, and keeping open those two untapped mana also gives you, it's like, am I going to draw a card with Franken or Backbuster? Or am I going to Siphon Insight? Or am I going to counter your play? So it's just, you know, the, the, one of the things about this Grixis mid-range deck is there's so many, uh, so many options, so much play to it. It's hard to decide, you know, do I want to hate on their non-creature? It, it depends on the draws that they have. You know, are they going to play two Fables and a Bankbuster and you need your negates? Or are they going to play Corpse Appraisers, uh, Urtai, and Shieldred, and you're going to need your creature removal? So definitely mm -hmm. a lot of play to these Grixis mid-range decks. One of the reasons that... It is so popular and does so well in the field. It's its flexibility, I believe. 
So this is interesting. Um, Niall cited out the Siphon Insight. Brit brought in all four. <laughs> Brit, is, Brit, Brit has turned her deck into basically a bona fide control deck, taking out the Harvesters and the Shieldreds, essentially trying to blank removal that Niall is going to have in their hand, only keeping in creatures that give two for ones. So yeah, Fraser, I, I gets guess... two for one, Fraser gets two for one, or ties, not two for one, but. Oh, just kidding. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, those those harvesters. Now the go for the throat soul transfer. Some of the, the and and cut down pretty much like almost all of the removal with the exception of those abrades. So hoping to make things just yep. not hit the battlefield in the first place. And speaking of abrade, there's double abrade in Brittany's opener, and we see two lands and the gate, double fable, and a, sh a shieldred and a corpse appraiser that will be shipped back. Uh, on the side of Niall Joan and taking a look at another two land hand here, a lot more expensive though, with Invoke Despair's Blade Coil Serpent, Fable and Negate. And we see Brittany also down to six, so at least it's fair. Gonna ship back that corpse, mm -hmm. corpse appraiser, um, not being able to, not having a removal spell or anything to put in the graveyard kind of makes corpse appraiser a little worse when it's your three drop and you're like, I don't really wanna play a three, three just for three and not get any value off of it, so. Looks like that will go to the bottom, and here we go. A couple of tap lands to start us off, and no third land for Niall Joan yet, but a Bankbuster may be able to help that out. We see a Duress going to get fired off on the side of Brittany. Take a little looky-loo here. I'm going to take the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. I don't blame her. Yeah, especially noticing that you only have two lands. You want to cut anything that they can play immediately. Mm. Oh, oh yikes. A five drop followed by a four drop is not what you want to see when you can't make your third land drop. And we see it. Brittany coming down with her own Fable of Mirror Breaker. Now, a third land on the side of Niall Joan. And we will see Brittany does have three lands and an Evoke Despair. We'll be able to cast the Evoke Despair next turn. But getting a little flooded on Brittany's side right now. Oh, yeah. never mind. But, but the fable prevents that from happening, and fables that's one of the reasons why it's so good is you're able to basically say, Oh, I'm flooding? Okay, no, I'm not, actually. That's why it's so so important to counter. And that's the second negate, and guess what? That's gonna get hit by. Yeah. Whoop. There it is. Whoop. Maybe here. There it is. So that is that's a lot of card draw. That's a lot of filtering through the deck for Brittany. And pressure on the board with those two twos. You can't dismiss the the damage that these two two goblin shamans are going to do while ramping Brittany, able to cast her any extra cards she may draw off of things like Invoke Despair. So there it is. Reflection of Kiki Jiki. And hey, I heard you like Fable the Mirror Breaker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there sorry, we go. Did you still draw what, what if she drew a fourth, like, right then and there? That would have laughed. <laughs> and we see another Invoke Despair. And unfortunately, Niall Jones, just the, the hand did just not come together for her. Double Blood Ties Harvester, no counter spells. The, the Reckoner Bankbuster can try to draw land here. But even if she's able to, you know, there's a go for the throat in the hand that can kills something there's a treasure a one one blocker it's going it would take a lot for Niall Jones to get through this turn and that's without the invoke despair in Brittany's hand yeah this is just such a tough spot for Niall Joan right now not being able to get that board presence again having that bank buster out this is crucially tapping it on turn three to try to get that land and not having a negate for fable was probably the turning point of the game if she had yes. risked it and just held up in the gate, it's possible that the game could have gone differently. I'm not saying for sure. And again, this is woulda, coulda, shoulda, but. Right. And Brittany pretty much knows she's in the clear. Uh, open deck lists on both sides here. So we see that little 1-1 one -one pilot jump in front of a goblin shaman. So now Joan takes two, drops down to six. Invoke Despair is going to take care of the rest. And Brittany... Still undefeated on the season, an impressive, impressive showing. Very good, good game to both of our sides, though. Congrats to both sides for, for making the playoffs and to Brittany for moving on to our top 16. Wow, that was an exciting Grixis matchup, uh, honestly. I
time. So very well played, very well played. And I am very ready to get into our next top 32 match. We have Sky Bauer Schmidt Sweeney versus Eleanor Meyer. And we're going to take a look at Eleanor's deck here first. Is it Ramp? A newcomer on the scene, I feel like, that we've only started to see in the past couple of weeks. Uh, and asked why uh, Eleanor chose this deck. She said it has a great Grixis matchup. So making the stock deck a bad choice for your opponent seems like a good idea. When you don't know exactly what your opponent's going to play going into this week. So uh, seems like a great deck. Does have a lot of play and just ramps to some 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 big dumb idiots like Skitterbeam Battalion and <laughs> I Cityscape Leveler. And then there's a bunch of spiders. Little tsk -tsk spiders. <laughs> I'm really excited to see the spider in play. I haven't seen it a whole lot in Standard, and so I'm really excited because it's just... It feels like a really fantastic card. It makes mana for you. It draws you cards. It has a really good body. It doesn't die to cut down, right? Which is so important. Right. It doesn't die to go for the throat, which is so common right now. It blocks um, It blocks Harvester, B-type Harvester, which is great. Um, it's so good. Four copies of Stern Lesson. That seems to be kind of a nice common card draw. I feel like that might be very necessary here to ramp into that turn four Might Stone, Weak Stone. We'll see how that goes. No yep. Fables. Nope. Uh, fables only, for, well, there are four of them, but they're all in the sideboard. Yeah, so yeah. the best card in standard, all in the sideboard. And now Eleanor's favorite flavor text. This one I actually did know. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's the first flavor text you find out as a magic player. That's a lava axe. Lava axe. Lava that axe. it is. <laughs> and now let's check out her. Opponent, Sky Bauer Schmidt Sweeney, they are on Esper mid range, the former best deck in standard before uh, Grixis took over everything. So <laughs> we see our friend Rafine here, uh, Denik, you know, all, all of our friends of old before that Meat Hook Massacre banning and the printing of Brothers War came about. Uh, still, wedding announcement, still one of the best cards in standard. You know, it's just overshadowed by another three mana enchantment, but <laughs> it's yeah. it's a great deck. It's a solid deck, and as Sky says, they believe that Esper is generically good, and I think that's correct. What do you think about that assessment? Absolutely. I mean, that Rafine is going to be super annoying to deal with, for sure. The Obscura Interceptor, I think, is especially interesting. If you're playing a ramp deck, the last thing you want is to have to replay your seven, eight, and nine mana card over and over and over again because of something like that, and then have it be countered by make disappear of all things. I think the interesting <laughs> part of this list that will be super crucial in this matchup is those two, um, I believe is the counter spell, the, the new annul. Is it defabricate, I believe it's called? Defabricate the white. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. The one in blue. Uh, it's uh, you choose one. You counter target artifact or enchantment spell. If a spell is countered this way, you exile it instead of putting it in the graveyard, or yes. counter target activated or triggered ability. So I feel like that card would be fantastic here. If you ramp into a big dumb artifact guy, you pay two, it's exiled forever. Hands yes. are clean. No problem. No problem. And now we see Sky's flavor text, favorite flavor text. Couldn't decide. Is a big fan of flavor text, so had to give me two, so I had to print them both. <laughs> if you fear the dragon's fire, you want you are unworthy to wield it. Oh. It's funny because to me, I was like, there's a card called Dragon's Fire, right? <laughs> but it's obviously yeah, Dragon's it Fire. There's so, <laughs> so much text on it. I don't think it has flavor text. Two on the nose. <laughs> Is this the Tarka? Dragon Lord of Tarka? It's not. It is Ghost Fireblade, which Ghost Fire. You could have sat me here forever. I wouldn't have known it. And now this next one, I thought I knew, but then I was sad because it was I wasn't right. Too stupid to survive. Too dumb to die. <laughs> okay, <It's, laughs> sounds like a goblin, to be honest. It is. It is. Okay. Now I had thought it was Squee. I thought it was like Squee the Immortal. I was like, oh, this has got to be Squee the Immortal, right? But it's just not. Squee's canonically pretty intelligent, actually, for Goblin, right? <laughs> I think so. I think so. But, I mean, that's just not saying too much because, you know, Goblins. But <laughs> <laughs> I love Goblins. I'm a big Goblin fan. You know what? We'll do my favorite flavor text real quick is Fire Aim Ready. 
Oh, which one is that? That is Goblin War Strike. Oh, that's good. But that's good. too stupid to survive, too dumb to die is Putrid Goblin. Putrid persists. Goblin. Okay. And I'm like, so, you know, I, I, I think if you sat me here long enough and had me go through, I probably would have guessed it eventually. But, <laughs> but enough about the flavor. <laughs> <laughs> I want to. I do want to hear yours later. After this game, we can see. We'll we'll do it after this exciting match here. Top thirty-two: Skybarum Schmidt Sweeney on Esper Midrange and Eleanor Meyer on Is It Ramp. We'll be watching from the side of Eleanor Meyer on our Is It Ramp deck, and we see Sky is our twenty-fifth seed. Eleanor is the eighth, so Eleanor will be on the play, and I see. Five lands, a stern lesson, and an abrade. And we see two lands. Double obscure interceptor, make disappear, wedding announcement, siphon inside on the side of sky. That's an interesting one as we see Eleanor shipping back the first, keeping the second pretty quickly and getting into it. What do you think about sky's opening hand? It is very reactive, is what I'm going to say. And it's a little risky, too, because you don't have the third land in the hand for the announcement. But you do have Siphon Insight to potentially act as that third land. You can mm -hmm. steal a land from your opponent that way. We'll see if that matters. Sometimes you got to risk it for the biscuit, I believe. As another Siphon Insight being drawn here. So not feeling as bad to use that Siphon Insight, perhaps, for a land as well. As we see Thran Spider come down here. Let's but Sky... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, it's fine. Uh, this this prevents a big dumb artifact being played next turn. This power stone token is completely useless for Sky, so there's no reason to try to take advantage of it. Ooh. Yes. Oh, not quite, not quite. Oh, so siphon insight. Oh, Ooh. that's interesting. Cityscape Yikes. leveler or might stone and weak stone. What to take here? And it looks like the might stone weak stone is the choice. I love it. Yeah, it's almost. Part of it is, in a situation like this, it's almost like, what do you take so you know that your opponent doesn't have it? Less so that you can have it, more so your opponent can't have it. And Mightstone ramps in. Of course, there's four in Eleanor's deck, so taking one is not so good for probability, but... Ooh, missing another land drop. That's quite all right. We have a... See, we have Sky has a Siphon Insight in the graveyard and still has one in hand. Has some options here. Can hold up the Make Disappear if they decide to do that. But they're just going to main face Siphon Insight. See another leveler and a mountain. Going to take that mountain real quick. Not quite on color, but hey, it'll work. Those Obscure Interceptors don't appreciate the mountain, but I'm sure Sky does. Yeah, it's still the worst land to get because even a tap land that's like a Xander's Launch would have been better, would have been nice. So you yes. don't have to worry about that. So this is interesting. That ramp and card draw, it's basically three for one. Right. We see Mightstone and Weestone coming down, being able to play a Rankiner, Reckoner Bankbuster as a follow up and a Plaza of Heroes. So now really rolling with the lands on the side of our Esper player, Sky. And let's see what they decide to do here. It looks still like still cannot when he... cast those interceptors, though. Oh, <laughs> that Plaza does not pay for it. Oh, that's so rough. Wedding announcement's great, but <laughs> that's true. But Eleanor is at the point now. If Sky taps out at any point, Sky could just die to some big dumb artifact like this. <laughs> Boom! Let's see our first big dumb artifact in Scatterbean Battalion Skittles. Skittles. Is that Taste what we, we're going to just call it Skittles from now on? I love that. Skittles. Skittles. Yes. Don't get your Skittles all over the board state. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sky said, no Skittles for me. Thanks. Uh, and that will be Make it Disappeared as Rafine, Scheming Seer, comes down on the side of Sky and a second Skitter Beam Battalion, knowing that the the coast was clear this time around, getting in for 12. Sky is at 15 already with those pain lands not helping much at th dropping down to three. The go for the throat probably feels so bad, but yeah, and just destroy evil. Not gonna you're destroy gonna enough evil. You're never gonna guess what's gonna get sided out after this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those, I think that being mana screwed is definitely 
hurt Sky's play in more than anything else, as far as I saw. It definitely hurt that that mountain was a mountain and not any other land to get Interceptor. If Sky, oh, had, been sure. able play, if Sky had been able to play the Interceptor on time, that probably would have changed so many things. It's just unfortunate. It is what it is, though. Yes. And all right. So wow. it looks like Eleanor has a pretty good idea what she would like to do here as she flies yeah. through sideboarding. And Sky going to take a quick little looky loo here and mm -hmm. some Kaidos. And we see like cut downs are going to hit the bin, as are the go for the throats. Not surprising. Shieldred back in. Hmm. I wonder about taking out Wandering Emperor. Exiling City's Keep Lover can be super clutch sometimes, so we'll have to see if taking that out matters in this matchup. Really There's... hammering in those counter spells, though. The Defabricate's coming in. Yep, Defabricate's coming in. There's Negate, Scatter Ray, Make Disappear. Can't forget about those Interceptors. Wow. Urtai. Urtai is sort of a counter spell within itself. So... Spell Pierce. Like that Pierce. one too. The one of. P I E R C E. That's how you spell Pierce. <laughs> I, I like you. it. <laughs> oh no. Careful, Kuro. I know. Phoebe will put you in timeout. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And here we are, getting going. Game number two here, top 32 matchup between Sky B. Sweeney on Esper Midrange and Eleanor Meyer on Is It Ramp. Denik is going to be the first spell played out onto the battlefield, 2-3 lifelinker. We'll see a Reckoner Bankbuster on the side of Eleanor and pass the turn back. Much better hand this time around from Sky. Being able to cast spells is great. We see Odawara needing to be, be played as a land, so double blue right now, not being able to cast something like Rafine, but able to would be able to play like Kaido, Wedding Announcement, or has the option of holding up Siphon Insight once again in this game, and it looks like Kaido is going to be the play here. Feels pretty good being able to draw after, and not having to discard after attacking with that Denik. Kaido will phase out, and not feeling really that much pressure. One thing Thran Spider cannot do is crew banker bankbuster. So we just see that spider come down and a quick pass of the turn back and triple wedding announcements. What are your thoughts on that, Kuro? Oh man. I mean it's it's gonna be wedding announcement season population <laughs> guy in this next few <laughs> turns. It's possible, yeah, that that attendant attack is signaling that Rafine is not coming down. Because if you were gonna play Rafine, you were gonna play it before the attack. Um, now you're saying that something that Thran Spider cannot do is crew Bankbuster, but what it can do is block basically anything at any at any time for any reason. Um, it is the <laughs> Batman of spiders right now. Um, and that Power Stone may matter, because that leads into those five drops. And Sky, crucially, appears that that Power Stone is completely useless right now. Hmm. Yes, uh, as we see, Spell Pierce. Oh, I love that. That was the draw off of Kaido. Yeah. That one mana spell appears, the one mana, one of, you know, Eleanor goes, I can't play around this. So, <laughs> and Thran's but probably going to get it's in there. That's why it's in there to punish it. Very punishing. I'll tell you. I don't know the... how I feel about it. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, the three drop enchantments. Loving Sky tonight. Loving us tonight. I, I see a fourth winning announcement now on the side of Sky. And opting to attack with two creatures. So rather than make a token is going to draw at the end of turn off of this Wedding Announcement. I would be tempted to just play Wedding Announcement every single turn as long as I, as, as much as I could, just for the means, even if it might not be optimal. However, I do think there's definitely an argument to be had that you should just keep landing them over and over because you want to be able to have enough flipped announcements that your tokens don't die to Brotherhood's end. That is, could be super important in the time to come. I could see that being a thing. As we know, there is uh, that, uh, sorry, Eleanor had three Brotherhood Ends in the main deck and an additional one in the sideboard. So 
Brotherhood's End abound in Eleanor's deck. As she is deciding what to do here, uh, these threats could start to get real as the wedding announcement is threatening a flip. Doesn't really have an answer. Like you said, Thran Spiders can block forever. Having drawn this a skitter beam battalion here, but doesn't really have any interest in casting it for the five cost. Wants to you know, go all in and on Skittles here. Yeah, Sky is playing the trying to bluff a counter spell, which is gonna work, by the way, because that Silken Zon's coming down. Um if Eleanor had played Skittles, it could have resolved. But you, after that spell pierce, you can't risk something like that. It's an insane tempo loss. Right. Um, yeah, Sky is playing this really well by trying to signal a counter spell when they really don't have one. But it doesn't really matter because the hand's entirely gas. Now we see. So. Thinking about it's underground river followed by let's see still gonna attack with two so going to draw off the wedding announcement again we'll see if sky decides to draw two by playing a second wedding announcement it's going to be the bank buster out of exile from the siphon insight so the one that was stolen from eleanor gonna start working and scatter ray was the draw on the side of sky here as well so wow Yes. And, and there's an interceptor in the hand, so whatever big dumb creature is coming down on Eleanor's side is not going to resolve anytime soon. It may continue to be cast, but it's not going to resolve. Right. And don't forget, Sky's at 28 life. So these little 1-1s one -ones and the 2-2, two -two, they're not really doing much. Uh, Denik has done some work this game, even though you know it might not have been noticeable. It's just little kind of little pokes. But Eleanor's already down to 12. Sky is at a comfortable 28 life, and even with being able to cast the Skitter Beam Battalion, that's still three attacks worth of, of non-blocked Skittles, so. Yeah, I mean, when you hit somebody with enough Skittles, <laughs> they upset at you, and then they tell you to stop. <laughs> but that's the problem with Skittles. Oh, you know what? I just remembered. There's the old uh, Skitherix was used to be called Skittles. That's where that's where that's from. I was like, what? Uh, oh, Sk the, the 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 rare the rabbit infected. or whatever. Is that oh no, rabbit. I'm thinking I'm thinking of Vizzledrix. Oh no, not that one. That one's yeah. from like seven. That's from like you were like, why is this a rare? It's like a that's seven mana like vanilla thinking. creature. <gasps> Don't yeah. say that. That's when I started playing Magic. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> Let's get back to the game. So <laughs> yes, sorry. There's a land <laughs> no, no. here. Um, good draw. <laughs> Did not cast the Interceptor, which I think is correct, by the way, because you want to always have that unit against a ramp deck, you want to make sure that you can match the ramp. And if the ramp deck's not doing anything, you don't have to do anything either. And that's exactly the game that Sky is playing right now, and I think it's completely paying off. I love it. And we do see the second wedding announcement. I'm with you. I don't know if I could have resisted just playing wedding announcement after wedding announcement or wedding announcement, but we see Sky playing very well uh, and planning out each turn, each move, holding up mana. It used to be bluffing a counter spell, but now actually has the counter magic in hand. We see Thran Spider looking through, uh, taking a little looky-loo here, and it's Land Land Might Stone Skitter Beam. Gonna take a Might Stone. It has a Skitter Beam in hand already, and a land is the draw here. Let's see if Eleanor just wants to slam this Might Stone. She might. The thing is, is that for all intents and purposes, Sky. It doesn't matter when Sky drew the scatter ray. In Eleanor's perspective, Sky always had the scatter ray. Um, there's no way to know whether or not it. They drew it like now or three turns ago, so you just kind of have to risk it and hope that they didn't draw it. But unfortunately, yes, unfortunately for Eleanor. Sky does have the scatter ray, and that will take care of that as only two mana open on the side of Eleanor, so unable to pay that scatter ray tax, and also unable to get into the red zone here. So things getting kind of clogged up on the battlefield. Eleanor is still holding at 12 life, but Sky's still at a very healthy 28 as Sky's gonna oh, Sky also has a grip full of cards here. By the way, Eleanor down to three cards in hand. And Sky's looking at, besides the seven cards in hand, also has a Siphon Insight in the graveyard. 
And that siphon inside in hand almost counts as two. <laughs> <laughs> it pretty much does. I mean, it's, it's the definition of a two for one. I can see why Sky is playing those wedding announcements so um, conservatively. Like I was saying earlier, there's the Brotherhood's End card. That's going to be a big issue. If they were just playing one after another, making tokens forever, that could have been a huge blowout. But this is playing around that so hard, and I think it's working. I agree. I like it. Uh, now, the question is, with the treasure, um, Sky would be able to play another three drop here, either another wedding announcement or Rafine. And still be able to hold up an Obscura Interceptor. So the question is, what will Sky decide to do here? Is it just going to be patience? And if nothing happens, maybe Siphon Inside again? Or to... Well, that's what I would do, because I like to do nothing until my opponents play something. But there's an argument that Rafine could come down, because of, like, I, I keep saying the Brotherhood's End, but it really does matter, because Rafine does not die to it. Um... So, so playing a second announcement, or a third announcement, you could be risking your tokens dying, but playing the Rafine, no harm, no foul. She's not going to die. She'll be fine. We see Denik, after Rafine comes down, Denik feeling froggy. Going to get into the red zone here. Conniving. Let's see, another Rafine. So able to keep a, a spare Rafine in the hand and still discard another Rafine while having Rafine on the battlefield. So this deck loves its multiples, I'll tell you. Yeah. You should play Mirror Box. No, don't don't actually. Don't actually play Mirror <laughs> Box. <laughs> now the question is, is Eleanor going to block? Eleanor has the option of crewing the Bank Buster with a token and the Thran Spider and then double blocking with a Thran Spider and a token, but definitely going to value that Bank Buster card draw a little more because Eleanor needs a little bit of help in her hand. So just a chump block from one of the tokens. Winning announcement going to go off. Make another token. So that's another 2-2 on the battlefield. And Stern lessened the draw off of that end step Rankiner Bank Buster. Well, I think... If there's a time to risk it, it would be now to try to get those Skittles on the table. But that's not... Oh. Although that now, might still be very risky. I wonder if there is a world where playing the Skitter Skittles for like five would be desirable over just slamming it for nine. Nine taps out uh, Eleanor and yeah. It leaves it leaves her with no other options for the turn. But, but it looks like she wants to start with Stern Lesson. Disdainful Stroke is the draw. Ooh. That could matter. That counters Interceptor, which could really matter. Although it would have mattered more maybe three turns ago. <laughs> but <laughs> that's fine. We'll, we'll see. Thinking about drawing a card now off of Bankbuster, and looks like that will be the case. Going to make a 1-1 one, one pilot. Another Stern Lesson is the draw. Hmm. I did like what you were saying earlier about the Skitter Beam for five, because that could have played around and make disappear, but oh, it's just going to cast now. Just... Slam it. Get that Skittles on the battlefield. Obscure Interceptor says, no way. I don't like Skittles. Yeah. <laughs> well, what kind of monster doesn't like Skittles? <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> a Cephalid, which is what an Interceptor is. Yeah. So back to the hand goes Skittles, and all that's out there is a lonely little spider with reach and two little 1-1 one -one tokens. And Eleanor says, there is no way I'm coming back from this. We are going to a game number three here between Esper Midrange and Is It Ramp? I like that yeah. Eleanor named her deck Is It Ramp Spiders. We'll see. <laughs> I totally missed that. I just thought it was Is It Ramp. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> we'll see. It looked like Eleanor didn't want to make any changes, but now we're looking at Sky's sideboard, and they're considering maybe making a change or two. Let's see what they would like to do. Let's see. I wonder. I don't know how much is going on the player on the draw is important in this matchup. Really, the important thing would be whether you can make disappear something meaningful. But Eleanor's meaningful play is um, the spider. If 
Eleanor plays Spankbuster, that's not as horrible as if it were, like, say, a Grixis deck. Um, I don't know if that, so I don't think that duress is necessary, but we'll see. Yeah. All right, we'll All see. Ellen. Five lands and two levelers. <laughs> yeah. yeah Not, like that. That's a hand of the week there. I like it. <laughs> but <laughs> this one looks better. Now, taking some time, considering what to ship back here, keeping Bankbuster into Thran Spider, helping the ramp, getting a little card draw going, and being able to still have a big boom boom in Skittles. I kind of like that. It, it, it feels kind of scary getting rid of your only removal, but I I like I like this keep by Eleanor a lot. Yeah, because you have to think, what are you going to kill with Voltage Surge? You can't kill Denik, you can't kill Rafine, you don't want to kill Wedding and Elton Tokens. What is there, like Tenacious Underdog? Eh, fine. It's meh. We see Thran Spider already doing their thing. So Eleanor already getting an early presence on the board here as wedding announcement comes down on the side of Sky, but no three other copies in hand this time. And opting for a quick skitter beam battalion. I like this. Very nice. This is a very aggressive start. Which is one of the scary things about these is it ramp decks. It's like they don't have to cast Skittles as a nine drop. It just be a five drop, six power all over three bodies. It's, it's a lot. We'll see speaking, how this goes, though, because that's a blocker. <laughs> you think speaking spider's of a good scary, blocker? yeah. <laughs> Yikes. And all of a sudden, you're looking at Stern Lesson and you're going, uh-oh. <laughs> so, I mean, the option of just trying to muscle through and casting another Skitter Beam is on the table and it looks like that's what Eleanor is going to do is going to say you know what some things are going to die here <laughs> but some things are also going to live math is for blockers and, and <laughs> get, get, in the, get in the red zone and we see shield are going to jump in front of one of the actual skitter beam battalions a 1-1 one -one jumping in front of the spider we'll see if the other 1-1 one -one is going to chump block because this is 10 damage you know, this is nothing to... Chump blocking doesn't work, though, because those battalions... Oh, it has trample. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, this is 10, this is 10 damage or 9 damage, however you like to... Wow. Amazing decision. Hmm. I like it. That shield... So we have to think in terms of increments of 2, right? So blocking a battalion means one less card you have to draw to live. Blocking, not blocking the spider means one less card you have to draw to live. Or one more card you have to draw to live, right? So if this goes down to two, you draw a card, go to four. Um, you just have to think about, can I survive another hit? Because Eleanor is not going to care about her life total. I feel like everybody can tell which one of us plays the control decks and which one plays the aggro decks. I'm like, Space Jam, <laughs> F6. <laughs> <laughs> you, you figure it out. Keep hitting space, 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 space. <laughs> yeah. And I'm the That's person me. who hits enter. I hit That's enter right. because I skip attacks. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> we see it. Sky off the draw going up to four. So what can be done here? Urtai comes down, can destroy one and also block one. But I don't know that that's enough. Graphene may be good because you can draw two cards, which gives you two more life. I mean, four more life, which lets huh. you live a little bit more. It definitely does. And Graphene would block. It's just, can another... Going to need to draw a castable spell off of Graphene, I think. Um, because having yeah. the... Wedding announcement token can chump the, the spider to prevent two of the damage. But I'm not seeing much else. So let's see if a castable card can be drawn here. And I like this attack from Sky. We see Shouldered and the 1-1 one, one 
getting into the battlefield. Now, this will keep wedding announcement from flipping, but you will draw an extra card off of it, too. So that is another two life. So it's kind of the same thing as blocking. <laughs> yeah, is but is it enough life to live? That is three card draws. And also, I mean, we do have to see what is drawn here. Oh, goodness. It looks like land land. Yikes, yikes, yikes. So we have Otawara, which can be used because there's three lands and two legendary creatures. Ah, and channel can be done uh, here because... At any time. <laughs> it can use the Power Stone because it's not casting a non-artifact spell. So, <laughs> all right. In gets Shieldred and the 1-1. One -one. As we see, just two lands discarded to Rafine. Another card drawn up to 10. So Rafine able to block and kill one of these creatures as well, which is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Ooh, flirting with that stern lesson, that's scary on the side of Eleanor. Uh, be, drawing cards, even if your shoulder's tapped and, you know, you're that close to winning, it's just, that's a scary thing. <laughs> it's so true. And you have to think about, can you draw something that will make that Bink Buster attack? Because that spider not having three power is mattering so much right now. Right. Like, can cast the second spider, maybe, and double to crew. But the crew with both of the spiders. But that almost assuredly would leave Eleanor dead on the swing back. So this is the turn. This is what it comes down to here in game number three between these two players in our top 32 playoffs. Uh, winner of this game will move on to top 16. And getting in the red zone. Four Skittles tokens, a Skitter Beam Battalion, and that spider going to pass. And with five and bouncing one of those tokens. So that's only eight damage coming across. Yeah. Eleanor is at nine. Oh my goodness. This is going to be close. <laughs> Urtai resurrected comes down, oh, kills that, that brand spider. Sky is playing wow. extremely well here. I think being able to calculate that many um, draws and life games to be able to get that to pop off. Hey, wow. Very well, very very well played from both of our players. Uh, both Sky and Eleanor did a fantastic job. Congratulations to both of them for making the top 32, and congratulations especially to our Esper Midrange player, Sky, for moving on to the top 16. Excellent job to both of them. That's It's quite an achievement, honestly, to make the playoffs in the VML. It's a huge field. 128 players is a lot. So, you know, there were 16 different divisions. You had to come in the top two of your division in order to even, you know, get a sniff of the playoffs. So, <laughs> uh, all of our players that should be extremely proud of themselves because it's quite an achievement. So let's move on to our next match of the night. Our next top 32 matchup is uh, there is a Grixis mid range deck in here. So we'll start with that. You know, no, Hyper Maru, but it is, it is not a mirror. So, <laughs> and <That's true. laughs> we see a Piper Maru, and I love, I, I love the kitty. I don't know who the kitty is, but it's my favorite picture. So, <laughs> uh, going with Grace's midrange. Looks like a pretty stock deck. Blood, Blood Tithe Harvesters, Corpse Brazers. There's a Soren in the main. And a Gix's Command is, you know, you see in some decks and don't see in others. And Wandering Lines as well. I see two of those. But doesn't veer that far off of what you would expect out of a Grixis deck. Is there anything in particular here you see? Well, I, as always, I usually hyper-focus on what counter spells they have and what... So there's zero copies of Siphon in sight, so that may matter. There's three main physicers in the main, and all the hard counters are on the sideboard. That can matter, too. Three Disdainful Strokes. That's the first time I've seen three Disdainful Strokes, I think, tonight, which is potentially a lot, but it may matter quite a bit. I mean... It... That is a lot. Yeah. That is cool. And those Wandering Minds are sweet as well. I love that card. It's good. That is one that, again, uh, one of those card decks that I feel like, we, uh, sorry, cards that we've seen floating around now in these Grixis mid-range decks, I don't know to get an edge on 
uh, the mirror or anything like that. But, you know, 2-1 flyer, maybe it's, you know, Grixis is a little bit weak to flyers, but it's uh, definitely been an interesting add in some of these decks. And now we see Piper's favorite flavor text. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? A counterspell for sure. Is that syncopate? It is a counterspell. It is not syncopate. It is disrupt. Uh, specifically, oh, apparently, the weatherlight printing. Oh, right. That know. makes sense. Because it was reprinted in Invasion. I do know. She, she told me that. That's the only reason that I knew that. So. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh, I mean, I knew that, but... <laughs> I think I had a no card back in the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, a good, it's a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> All right. And let's check out the other side of this matchup. We have Ash Lizzle on Mardu Angels. An another deck that I'm actually surprised we didn't see a little bit more of. A lot of people playing this deck to try to, you know, kill Grixis. Uh, Sanctuary Warden's very good. Being able to bring things back with Seraph Paragon. So it's a lot of, you know, Steel Seraph flying over Grixis's head. Things like that. Um, any thoughts on Mardu Angel's list in general? I think it's the, the four of um, Archangel Wrath sort of acting as an anti-invoke despair almost, right? Because you gain that four back, you kill two dudes, that's your own three to for one. And then they cast it back, you sack the Archangel kind of at parody, You're taking advantage of both all the good white creatures, like all the angels you were just talking about, and also Fable of the Mirror Breaker, the best card in standard. Um, you're not playing blue, though, so you don't... You have to basically play reactive the whole time. You can't prevent people from getting their entry to the battlefield ability. And that may matter a lot in this matchup, because those Corpse Appraisers and Wandering Minds, they're going to get you. Yes, they are. And I, one of the things, like you mentioned about that Archangel of Wrath... I like being able to play that and kill some Fable of Mirror Breaker tokens without spending an entire card on it. it feels really, yes. really bad when you abrade a Goblin Shaman token. You're like, I just abraded a third of a card. You know, like I just spent a one card to kill their third. So feels really good. Archangel Wrath lines up very well against our Fables. And now let's take a look at the flavor text here. The Orzov are not the only religious tradition on Ravnica, nor the oldest. I know this. Is this is this priest of fell rights? No. Oh, you had to make it. I thought you were. I thought you had it. I know what you're talking about. It's like a black creature, right? It's mono black. Mm -hmm. Dang it! I, I don't remember the name. It has something to do with sacrificing creatures. It was priest. Yes, it does. It's okay. <laughs> I, I'm gonna count it, and because I'm just gonna pretend that you. you said it but it would it's priest of priest rotten gods rotten gods i no okay <laughs> oh and i need to tell you my favorite flavor text right okay yes please i want to hear yours my favorite flavor text is i'll show you original research you hack <laughs> i i don't know what card that is but i love the chutzpah that you said it with like i i like the <laughs> Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's hack is, I think hack is not, like, italicized for ambiguous. That's academic dispute from Strixhaven. I like that a lot. That's, that's, gonna, that's gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save that one. Okay. <laughs> and I think uh, it's only fair uh, that I give mine after this match. I, I would love that. Asked. I mean, nobody really asked me either. I just kind of told you. So yeah. well, I'm going to do it anyway then. Okay. Yes. But, Baby, yeah. you're running the show. So. Yeah, I know. So nobody can stop me. I would think, <laughs> wouldn't dream of it. No, not at all. Speaking of stopping the show, let's get the show on the road. Let's check yeah. out our next top 32 match. We have Ash Ooh. Lizzle on Mardu uh, on the top of our screen, and we are on the side of Piper Maru playing Grixis Midrange. We see double go for the throat, Reckoner Bankbuster, and Shieldred. So, go for the throat, one of the better, more efficient removal spells in this matchup. What are your thoughts about this opener from Piper? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so, the thing is, is that it's nice to kill the Harvesters. But you don't have cutdowns, which is a much more efficient answer. And then 
you can't kill Sanctuary Wardens, you can't kill Wedding Announcement Tokens, you really don't want to be killing Goblin Tokens. It feels kind of awkward, I think. It's the best target for go for the throw in this matchup is the Archangel Wrath, in my opinion. Right, um, and... Unless there's another creature I completely missed that's better, but... Yeah, you don't even want to kill Owl, right? Because if you kill Owl, it dies, you look top 7, you get a Wedding Announcement for free? Okay, nice. Thank you. <laughs> Right, and uh, like, you know, Sarah Paragon, but that's only a one-of, like you said, Archangel Wrath being a four-of, and uh, yeah. definitely a very intimidating flyer. Now, the thoughts about casting a go for the throat on this Blood Tithe Harvester to be able to have some Corpse Appraiser food is interesting, yes. though. That's That would be the only sort of caveat. That's another reason why you don't want to kill tokens, because you would be able to get pop that off. And there's a fable. Oh, no! <laughs> Speaking of tokens! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Goblin Shaman token. They heard us. So Blood Tithe Harvester is gonna hit the bin. Some noms for this corp appraiser and a fable also on the side of Piper. So it'll be interesting. The thing about this shoulder's gonna come down. This is gonna tax the fable being able to loot next turn. And if anything is to happen to Shieldred, there are three gold for the throats in Ash Lizzle's deck. Uh, Record or Bankbuster can be crude as well. Yeah, and it appears that Ash doesn't have any go for the throats because I think they would have been cast right then and there on that Shieldred. Because right. Ash isn't playing gold Shieldred, right? Uh, no, Ash is yeah. not playing. Um, there are no Shieldreds in the 75 on the side of Ash. So that so. would be the reason to play go for the throat. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So we'll see a little bit of uh, asymmetry here. Interesting. Hmm. This is definitely a big because you know, you think to yourself, I'm at 18 life. I could take a couple damage here and there. And it's like, mm -hmm. how deep do you need to dig for an answer to Shieldred? And it looks like Ash is going to do the maximum and discard two cards, one of them being uh out there, and Goblin Shaman gonna get in, making some mana, so maybe a mana crunch on the side of ash oh, that's an interesting play blocking with the bank buster to try to avoid some potential removal like brotherhood's war i want to say or even um voltage search potentially yes there is um ash is playing a braid in the deck uh, yes there are brotherhood ends and a braid one of each in the deck in the main board. The second Blood Tithe Harvester on the side of Ash, though, to follow up. And there is no fourth land on... So needing to get in with that Goblin Shaman token and then valuing it enough to keep it alive as we see Piper drawing a fifth land here. So able to double spell if she so desires. Yeah, that Fable is potentially coming... To, although the Corpse Appraiser is very tempting. If you can draw yourself into another copy of, yeah, if you can draw yourself into another cop into the first copy of Invoke Despair, that would be huge, huge tempo shift. Yes, and we see Corpse Brazer coming down. Has plenty of options here. The Inspiring Overseer and um, Al, both off of the Mirror Breaker discard, going to take a Make Disappear, but only one blue source on the battlefield right now for Piper, and it is a painful one as well. It has already been used for that Corpse Appraiser. Yeah, it's an awkward, it's definitely an awkward situation with the lands given here. Shivan Reef is a nice land to have because you can just, you're totally fine with drawing cards and gaining that life back. And the go for the throat's there now, so at least the reflection's probably going to get killed. But not being able to make disappear here can matter, potentially. That Archangel's not coming down, though, I don't think, because there's no reason to play it without kicking it. Yes, mm -hmm. and we see Ash just made the fourth land drop. So thinking about could get in with the goblin, kind of sacrifice it to make a treasure to be able to kick the archangel, but just once. And got to remember, Ash is already at eight life, and with Shieldred in play, that is not that much of a cushion. Uh, Blood Tithe Harvester going to minus on that Shieldred. I think we're going to see a two for one here. We'll see Goblin Shaman getting in. So. 
<laughs> I feel like a end the festivities is about to be played. All right. I feel like this is Blood Tithe Harvestering on the Shieldred to make sure that the Blood Tithe Harvester wasn't killed in combat. And then maybe kicking an Archangel of Wrath here for two. Just the two, just the one kicker to do the two I damage like instead of four damage. No, it's a brotherhood end. Yeah. That makes so, that makes a little more sense. Yep. Cleaning up the battlefield, and Ash is left with two blood tokens and a treasure token here. We'll it see definitely feels bad to it definitely feels bad to play a board wipe and then them immediately play like three tokens. <laughs> I'm exaggerating a bit, but I've definitely been in a situation where you farewell and you're like, great. And then they're like, okay, Fable and Blood Tithe. And you're like, I just wiped the board. <laughs> it's like, I just. For 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I just cleaned. <laughs> this board was spotless when I left it. Yeah. <laughs> when I passed my turn. <laughs> so this may disappear, may come in clutch. If that Archangel is coming down right now, or Sanctuary Warden, either, either or. Oh, Fable, play around to make it disappear. Will it get? Wow, and it... that is interesting. So Fable has course, sort of been demoted from a 3 for 1 to a 1.5 for 1, right? Because that token's gone and the make disappear is gone as well. That right. may be really bad for Piper because now that basically opens the field up from bigger angels. Piper does know that a loot is coming off of this fable, so can get rid of this swamp. And there's only one card left in Ash Lizzle's hand. And Wandering Mind, that's quite a draw. Going to keep the gold for the throat in the hand and going to also keep this Wandering Mind that'll come down onto the battlefield. And we'll take a look at, I believe, the top six cards. Yes, top six. Get a non-creature spell. It's ridiculously good. All right. Better, it was so nice in turns, although I didn't see it very commonly. It was really good. Anyway, I'm just reminiscing. I think the interesting thing here is that Go for the Throw is really looking for a target, and it's just not hitting it. All right, we'll see. Wandering Mind. Gonna keep open that Go for the Throat, though. We see Invoke Ooh. Despair and Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So without an answer or a flyer on the side of Ash Lizzle, that is all. It's almost enough. Almost enough. Now, you, we can observe here a very interesting thing since Ash is not playing a blue deck. Piper can basically just slam whatever she wants whenever she wants, right? But Ash knows this and could potentially proactively play to avoid situations where that's bad, right? So that wedding announcement is single-handedly preventing Piper from drawing two cards with that Invoke Despair. And if Ash lands a Planeswalker, that's like, oh, cool, you draw no cards. Yeah, um, that draw no cards, that's... take no damage, and doesn't feel bad to sack a one one. You know, if this wedding announcement, you they won't even you know, she wouldn't even have to sack her whole board. She gets to make another one one here. Yeah, and Piper did not have does not have blue up, so we know that Piper is going to be able to or is going to have to take whatever Ash is about to play. Let's see what this yep. is. Coast is clear. Ash has two cards in hand. Let's see what they are. And two like blood, that. so if they're lands, that's just you just discard it, you're good. All right, she's considering what to do here. It definitely is a precarious, you know, being at seven life and your opponents at eleven, you know, they have a two-one flyer, Elder Dragon War. So what chapter will this war start on? Chapter three. Going right to three. Just skipping the rest, I want to read the end. Skip to the last chapter. But that go for the throat, it's a token, but it found it found a, a target. So Yeah, that go for the throat was the equivalent of an F on your English class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see I, I wonder if it was I wonder if it was right to play that Dragon War right then and there. Cause you because she knew that the reflection was gonna flip. So you could have wiped the board after it flipped to ensure that the board was continuing to be clear and discarded the land for blood. I'm not sure. It looks mm. like land is being discarded to blood here. We'll see. Wow. Psycho Going land on. was discarded to blood. Wow. That's very significant. Oh. I mean, oh, that's rough. Yeah. Land, land, lands. 
That happens to the best of us sometimes as we move to the sideboards for game number two between Piper and Ash. And we see Piper just doing a little quick work in the sideboard there, ready to get back into it. She sided out all of the things that could potentially counter those angels. That's really interesting. So mm. that means if an Archangel of Wrath gets down, it's not going to get countered, no matter what. The only counters left are negates. Wow. Hmm. Very ambitious, for sure. I like it. Speaking of things I like, I like this hand. Blood Tithe Harvester into either Fable or Corpse Appraiser, and then Shieldred and Wandering Mind to reload a little bit there, too. That Harvester can find a good target. Like another Harvester. Then like that another Corpse Harvester. Appraiser, <laughs> that is going to pop off right now. Oh, yes. Not right now, but very soon. Harvester staring down Harvester. We'll see if Ash just wants to minus two, minus two on this other Harvester and kind of clear things up. But no, I want to keep my Harvester alive, Ooh. says Ash, as it gets airborne. So into the air for three. Piper down to 17 and Ash is at 19. Another Fable of the Mirror Breaker, the draw on the side of Piper. Going to take care of the other Blood Tithe Harvester, so there'll be no more airborne Blood Tithe Harvesters here. And Corpse Appraiser to nom up that vampire real quick from the graveyard. Double land, go for the throat. The reveals off of this Corpse Appraiser, go for the throat. Doesn't do much against Steel Seraph, but it is a removal spell. Yeah, that's definitely you. You take that if you're expecting more angels to be brought down, but. Looks like Piper's thinking about taking a land. I, I would agree with that, because then you can land that turn four shield drift. Oh, took the cold to the middle. Okay. All right. Here we go. The Fable's probably coming down next turn, then. Does have Piper does have some options on three. Inspiring Overseer. Seal Seraph does not need to give that one flying. We'll see Seal Seraph looking to get into the red zone, I'm sure, here. It depends on whether or not it's going to get Vigilance or Lifelink, most likely. It looks like lifelink. Yeah, that makes sense. You're not interested in blocking Corpse Appraiser with that guy. Gaining life prevents you from dying to invoke despair later in the game. I like that play. And Piper drew an untapped mana source. Not punished at all. But still looking to get into the red zone with Corpse Appraiser. And then follow it up with, I'm imagining, either the Wandering Mind or the Fable. So, And it looks like Wandering Mind is going to be the play here. Got to dig a little bit, because would be able to cast an Invoke Despair next turn, but not going to find one. Taking in a Braid instead. That's good enough. That kills the Seraph. That's really, really good for Piper right now. Especially remembering that Ash did Mulligan down a 6, so that card advantage is going to be extremely important here. Right, we see Ash blooding away a land, uh, just drawing up to four cards now, while Piper sits very comfortably, six cards in hand, and a blood on the battlefield still to be able to filter out any unwanted cards. And some powerful cards in hand too, Doubled Fable and a Shieldred, as long, uh, along with two removal spells. Is this Wandering Wine interested in blocking? Yes, it is. Jumping in front of that Inspiring Overseer. Going to take three from the Steel Seraph. Dropping down to 11. Ash up to 23. We'll see what the follow-up here is from our Mardu Angels player. It's going to be Liliana. So suddenly that two-card hand is actually potentially pretty okay. If you can empty your hand before you start plussing Liliana, then that's just a one-sided... Um, uh, so there's a card that I'm not I'm blanking on. It makes you discard every turn. Anyway, this might be really, really relevant. Let's see how this goes. Yes, so we'll see. A braid taking care of that seal, Seraph. And Liliana's on one with that goblin shaman looking hungry. So we'll see. Ash with three cards in hand. Well, every card that Liliana makes Piper discard is one less card that Piper can use to affect Ash's board state, because all four of those are gas. Yes. So Piper's got to be thinking about, what is it am I discarding here? And I think the discard is potentially maybe, oh gosh, is it Soren or Go for the Throat, potentially? 
Gohan Sword doesn't have many targets, but it's the only removal. I kind of like the idea of Soren without drawing a land, you'd be able to double spell a fable or a potential threat and go for the throat. And shield was just great. And another threat to put on the battlefield to threaten this Liliana. But yeah. I'm not sure. Soren does draw cards too. Shield I, gets axed. I That's could see it as like I'm not surprised that it was one of the the four drops, and I think it was very well thought out. Lauren of the Third Path came blazing. I I love it. Lauren of the Third Path coming on down. That has been a it, Lauren has made a big splash in standard lately. It's just it kills artifacts and wedding announcements and fables left and right. That. Is so cool, actually. I haven't seen Lauren be played before, so that's my first. Oh, and, really? Yeah, that's really interesting. I really, really liked that play. I guess I'm yeah. usually one of the evil Grixis players, so I've seen a lot of Laurens. I've had a lot of my fables killed, but that was a great turn for Piper. So even though Piper lost their fable of the Mirror Breaker, they were able to kill the Lauren, kill the Liliana, get a Soren into play, and make a 2-3 flyer that just absolutely just negates this Giada entirely. Yeah, and P Ash doesn't know this at this moment in the game, but the fact that Piper didn't even play Gix's command before attacking really shows us exactly how far Piper is ahead, right? Yes. Because if she needed to cast the Gix's command, she would have. But right. it's not necessary. She has three creatures, four four non-creature permanents that do things. Um, that blood token, just in case an extra land is drawn, that Xander's Launch already has cycling. There's, It's really, really hard for Piper to run out of gas here. Yes. As we see, Ash had to cycle a land here and then just played another land. Last card in hand is a go for the throat to kill the 2-3 lifelinking vampire. So Giada does have Vigilance. We'll be able to attack Soren but can only take it down to one. So that just means it, Soren can't make another vampire for now. Invoke Despair is a huge draw for Piper. Oh my G-O-S-H. That is a huge draw. And, and then you play Gix's command immediately after <laughs> on whatever it is that Ash draws. Like it, it's, yeah. Couldn't play that fast enough. Go for the Throat is the reveal. Piper says, yeah, whatever. I'm at 11. I'll take two. Down to nine. Goblin Shaman's getting in. Treasures galore. Four mana up. Still able to play something like a Corpse Appraiser. Another Fable. Can play the regular Bank Buster and draw off of it and hold up. Go for the throat. Looks like Corpse Appraiser going to come down. Going to make sure Sarah Paragon wouldn't have any, any food here. Taking the Steel Seraph. Going to eat that. And revealing another Invoke Despair and Shieldred. When you see your opponent been a shieldred off of a corpse appraiser look you need to be scared <laughs> i kind of assume that they pick they've gotten an invoke despair in that situation that's just what happens yes. yeah six lands no permanence or rather no creatures no board state <laughs> nothing in the grave and you you mentioned um you mentioned sarah paragon earlier but exiling the steel seraph does nothing to paragon because paragon can't cast it anyway um because it is a six drop you you can't cast it alternate cost like that for but sure it, it doesn't matter anyway, because that was an insane board state. You get to that point, it's crushing card advantage every single turn. Yes, it so, was. Good. But good games to both of our, our uh, competitors there. Uh, Piper Maru uh, taking that one down. Grixis midrange on two games down over Ash Little on Mardu Angels. Again, congratulations to both our players for making the top 32. And Piper, we look forward to seeing you in top 16 next week. What a matchup. And with that, we're moving on to our final match of the evening tonight in the top 32 of the female brought to you by Wizards of the Coast and GLHF. Good luck. High five. The greatest podcast there is. I say that, you know, without, I, I, I used to do a podcast too, and their podcast is still better than mine. I love Megan and Maria. They're fantastic. Anyway, we're going to check out Emma here on, you guessed it, Grixis Midrange. <laughs> no way. I love Grixis Midrange. I, have, I haven't seen enough of it. Tonight, actually. So it makes sense, though, because asking why Emma played Grixis this week, uh, she says, didn't want to shift into a completely unfamiliar deck, and Grixis midrange was 
the type of deck she was comfortable with, full of cards she's familiar with, and enjoys using. So listen, this deck is just in some people's wheelhouse. Some people are like, you know, I can play control decks, control decks all day. Some people are just like, give me all the dirty mid-range four drops you can, and this is where I live. And this is where Emma lives. And I think that's great because that's also where I live. So <laughs> so like cards like Corpse Appraiser and Shieldred and, and Fable that are just value machines is what she loves. And that's what I see a lot of in this list. I do see a couple of Brotherhood's Ends, some Gix Command in the main there. Any thoughts on this list? Is that one Shieldred in the 75? I was looking at that. I do believe... But there what? are, I thought that's, that there were more, but I think that is it. Yeah, that's really, really ambitious to have only one of that. So this is really not interested in right, winning off the back of Shieldred. That's what that tells me. It's really just the crushing card advantage and everything else. This really tells me, like, I don't need to draw this big threat. I just have one. It's good. I don't need to draw more. And then the sideboard is extremely varied as well. It's very pretty much ready for anything. Uh, as always, the Counterspell Suite, we have... Three Mink Disappears in the main. No hard counters in the main. Only three hard counters in the sideboard. I have, you know, in all the games we've had so far, and probably potentially this one, it's been very counter light, even during games where people side in a ton of counters. It's really only one or two that have really made the difference. It's not been like, oh, I counter your thing three turns in a row. So hmm. we'll see if that, the trend continues here. Yes, we will. And now uh, Emma's favorite flavor text. These days, some wizards are finding that they have a little too much spell left at the end of their mana. It's another counter spell, isn't it? But I don't know what it is. I don't recognize it. Anybody chat? <laughs> this is <laughs> Nether Void. Oh, it's Nether Void. Oh, that's not a counter spell at all. It's a block enchantment. <laughs> It's quite all right. Let's take a look at Emma's opponent here, Lemon <gasps> Cassidy, with probably like when we were going over matches to cover, I was like, zombie. I was like, this is, I have to, I have, this one has to be on camera. How could I not do this? And then later, Hayu, I love Hayu, one of the coaches of VML, was like, Zombie, co that sounds awesome. And she, oh, she, and she goes, what's the four color? Oh, rat a brick. I was like, yeah, I didn't actually really look at the deck list, but I just saw a zombie combo and I was like, this has to happen. We need to see this. So props to Lemon Cassidy for deciding, they said they decided to do something fun, add a fourth color to their brew. Not expecting to win, but if they do, it'll be spectacular. And I have to agree with the spectacular part. Uh, I mean, Lemon Cassidy five and two, so I don't know. I I think she's got just as much a shot as winning as anybody else. But this deck is sweet. Some some cards I haven't seen in a constructed standard deck before, like Jaxus the Troublemaker, that looked really cool in in preview season, and then nothing ever happened with it. So I'm kind of loving that it is here. Do you have any any um, input on this amazing zombie combo? Oh. Okay, first of all, I'm yeah. just double-checking the text of these cards so that I understand how this works. So let me just <laughs> kind of break it down, if that's all right. So Break it down for us. It's it's already a fairly basic Grixis value deck, okay? Mm -hmm. You have Blood Time, you have Corpse Appraiser, you have Make Despair's Fables, Invokes, Shieldred, all of the works. So if all, all else fails, you could just kind of rely on it being a Grixis deck. But the combo is Jaxus and Ratadravic. Now, Ratadravic says that when a legendary creature you control dies, or I think it's another, uh, it comes. you can make a zombie that's a copy of it that is not legendary. So there is nothing on Ratadravic that says the, the token that the creature that dies has to be a non-token creature. So Jaxus taps and makes a copy of a creature that has basically has blitz. It dies at the end of the turn and draws you a card. That copy is not have to be a non-legendary card. So you Jaxus, you copy, say, Radadrabic. The token is legendary. The token dies to the legend rule. Radadrabic returns the token as a non-legendary token. You draw a card, you have a second copy of whatever legendary card you copied. If it's another Radadrabic, you could potentially get multiple things, I think. Uh, yeah, you can get, <laughs> you, can, you can go very wacky, very, very quickly. And Fable does not combo with this, because Fable 
only copies non-legendary cards. That's why the Jax system's in there. Um, so I really, really want to see this go off at least once. I oh, will giggle like a cool girl. Oh, I man. sure hope it does. But before we get into that, we have two more flavor texts to do. So I oh, have yes, Lemon Cassidy here. More of that strange oil. It's probably nothing. Oh, I know this one. I know the text, but I can't remember the name. It says uh, proliferate draw card. It's an instant. I right. wish I, I wish I had like such. It's steady progress. The blue, yeah. It's I. Steady progress, yeah. And the artist Vidalkin has like one of the hands. The, in the hands in the oil. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what the name. <laughs> That's I am I am very impressed. And hey, Phoebe. <laughs> yes. I would love to know what is your favorite flavor text. Before I get to that, I cannot believe that nobody has gone through this discussion of this deck and not made a Zombocom joke. Because you can do anything <laughs> at Zombocom. Zombocom. <laughs> and that just shows how old I am. But this one will too. The flavor text that I have chosen is Perception is more pleasing than truth. That's is that a really delusion? good one. Is that Delusions of Mediocrity? No. Is it illusions of grandeur? <laughs> no. no. Okay, that's that's my guess. I don't have any guesses. It's just really cool. <laughs> this is Erase from Urza's Legacy. Oh. It's first printed. Erase the, the Urza's Legacy one. Yep. Not the Erase. Not the Urza's Legacy one. <laughs> not you know, the I not still the Urza's Legacy. You, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's wait till after the smash to put Cordo in timeout. So <laughs> no. Not again. let's get going with our final top thirty-two match of the evening here. Oh. And but it looks like both players are shipping back their seven. To be fair, unfortunately, it looks like Lemon Cassidy may oh. have to ship. Oh my goodness gracious me! On five cards, still a single land, but going to say, you know what? I, I I get this. Saying, if I go down to four, I'm just not going to win. I just need to, like, trust in the heart of the cards here and draw some lands. And uh would yeah. be a solid hand with some lands on the side of Lemon Cassidy. Uh, we'll see a tap land on either side. And we are off to the races. Oh my god, that's so unfortunate. Three one landers in a row. I mm. oh, that is not a good situation. Okay. But we can work with it. Right. We can work with that. An untapped land here on turn two. But opting to keep up that make disappear. And so Kansen gonna come down as a land and just pass the turn back, planning on drawing a card off of that rank or bank buster. And just what you want when you're short on lands. Invoke Despair, your, your five drop. So we'll see Blood Tithe Harvester coming on down. Bank Buster going to draw a card, and it's another Bank Buster, and followed by a Tap Land. So not looking too bad on Emma's side here. So making land drops, able to draw some cards. A third Blood Tithe Harvester on the side of Lemon Cassidy. It's important to mention, though, that Emma is really, really light on black right now. Up until now, she has no black sources whatsoever, which could be an issue if she ends up drawing an Invoke Despair later. That means she needs to draw four, okay, two more <laughs> black sources now. But still, right? Like, this could have been Invoke Despair mana, but it's not because yep. we don't have that there yet. It's that definitely plain. did help. Her. There's another one. Do you take a Harvester, though? Yeah, that makes sense. Looks like Harvester may be the choice here. Would be happy to play either uh, Harvester, Ranker, or Bank Buster. Can hold up the Bank Buster for a card draw. And it looks like that's what will happen here. And we see Lemon Cassidy finding her third land, getting in the red zone with that Blood Tithe Harvester, offering the trade. Emma says, Yeah, I'll take that. So trading, and we'll see the Corpse Appraiser on the side of Lemon Cassidy here. So Able to do a little digging into her deck as well. It was definitely risky to attack into that. That Bank Buster could have been crude, and Lemon had no way to deal with it. I wonder if Lemon 
was bluffing or if Lemon potentially missed that idea. It would be definitely good to keep that in mind for the future. There's more lands. Oh, more lands that don't tap for black mana? My goodness <gasps> gracious. Is any That's more rough. than if one if more than one of your first five land drops is one of those blue red is it lands, then you cannot cast invoke despair on five. And we see Emma with five different non-black lands so far out of the seven we have seen. So it's a lot. It's a lot. Fable? Yeah, and Emma, you're... Sorry, go ahead. Please. It's just, yeah, it's just interesting because Lemon started really slowly, but because Emma hasn't actually had any pressure, mm -hmm. Lemon's doing perfectly fine here. Lemon has Invoke Despair next turn, which is extremely good. And Emma does have the removal, but not the pressure. I'm in still 17. And there's only one children in that list. Yes. We'll see. Uh, Elen I'll I will say I'm impressed with the way that Lemon has battled back from the mulligan to five. I know Emma did also mulligan to six. But both players definitely making a game out of this. As we see regular Bankbuster getting into the red zone. Going to be double blocked. Corpse Appraiser and the Goblin Shaman, which will be cut down quickly. So able to preserve that regular Bankbuster and eat that Corpse Appraiser. Yeah, that's definitely rough. But this Fable is going to eventually flip. There's a Jaxus. That could potentially be good. Here's the combo. Yeah, it's going to dump off that make disappear. Definitely not as good when your opponent has 8 million mana in play. Invoke Despair coming down. Urtai have something to say about this, perhaps? And it yeah. looks like he will. I'm like, mm, no. Good free card, no. though. It's pretty all right. Yeah. And it is. Oh. Cut down. Now, this is going to be really grindy for sure. <laughs> Cutdown can take care of the two, three power creature. It cannot take care of the one power creature that crews like it has three power, though, because there are only two copies in Lemon Cassidy's hand and already at six. So that's, you know, wow. definitely getting down there. So we'll see Good. what Lemon Cassidy draws here. And it looks like Shattered Sanctum. So just another land can is able to cut down and cut down and play Blood Tithe Harvester. But the question is, will that be enough? Well, double cut down would mean that um, only one Bank Buster would be able to crew, and that's pretty significant here. A Harvester coming down needs to be answered because that can kill the um, pilot token as well. Although that may not be an issue. That may not be a pressing issue. This is a rough spot for Lemon. Are the Lemons doing whatever they can? Yes. You see her deciding what order she wants to do this in. Looks like wanting to fire off one of the cut downs to start things off. It is always scary when your Grixis phone just has seven mana at their <laughs> disposal. So, But the first cut down went through. So saying, you know what? Let's fire them off. Taking care of that other... Uh, threat on three power threat on the battlefield and following it up finally with a blood tithe officer gonna make another blood here uh go for the throat will take care of reflection of kiki jiki but like you said lemon is at six life so would be able to take a hit from one record or bank buster and not need to chump block yeah oh there's a fable well this is Oh, there's the one of Shieldred. Okay, well, I uh, guess it was drawn. Sometimes all you need is one, right? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I'm sorry. There are, t there are two in this. Oh, there are? I believe so. Oh, I guess or that is the this? other one. No worries, then. Uh, it's funny, because like I thought that there was one, too, and I'm taking a closer look, and I see two. Sometimes uh, they kind of, like... Where's Waldo them? 
in the deck list. <laughs> so it's just like, guess how many I'm playing. And oh, yeah, you're it, right. Yeah. The thing is, that if one it'll be one will be like the alternate, like full art. One will be like in Phyrexian. One will be so they all have different frames and things too. And I'm just like, why? Why can't they all just be sorted together nicely, nicely? Was we'll see Emma just take down that first game. So how did I miss? How did I miss that this doesn't have Invoke Despair in it? That's super significant. I can't believe I missed that. No Invoke Despair. No wonder they were keeping. No wonder she was keeping so many non-black lands. It's not necessary. They're not necessary. Oh, there you go. I missed it too. So I, I guess I'm so you know, used to them playing Invoke Despair. I just thought it was there because that's right? just such an obvious card to play. I guess we're like really you're based on the blue red. Tunnel Tunnel Vision Dust. All the all the Grixis we've watched so far. I even even the zombies players playing Invoke Despair. So and they're playing four colors. Okay. I do like it though because not too. having invoke despair means that disdainful stroke is actually really bad against you. Because that's sort of the reason why you play disdainful stroke is to deal with shieldred and invoke despair. But if invoke despair is not there, just get him with the three drops. Right. Get him with Kaido. Get him with Bankbuster. It works. And the deck doesn't rely entirely on shieldred either. So just a nice curve. A nice. This is a much lower curve, much more aggressive. I like it. I like that. I like this list a lot. As we take a look here at Lemon's side of things, gonna bring in some abrades. Take a quick look at those invoke despairs. I'm going to shave the Radadrabic. Can I just say I love that the name of this deck is Nonsense Round One. <laughs> <laughs> yes nonsense round one nonsense that... <laughs> that's a great way and i i love calling things nonsense i call my decks nonsense all the time so i'm not trying to like say this is bad at all i absolutely love this this is oh awesome. no we're we're all here for this yes. <laughs> I'm here great. for the non-conventional Grixis mid-range deck that's not playing a million shieldreds and invoke despairs, and also the zombie combo deck. I'm here yeah. for both of this. This is a great matchup. Got some great players here. Top 32, VML, get stoked. I'm so excited. Winner of this goes to the top 16. Ooh, a, a single hearse. Ooh, One single hearse. Ooh, pricey. and three I lands like that. There are lands in the hand. I guess we keep it. There Fair are. enough. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> both of these hands seem very um, exactly what you would want to see for both of these decks. So I, there seems to be no obvious way that this game will go, but it may uh, swing when this, if this harvester gets played. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, it thinking did, about it. If it is, then Lemon gets a huge tempo lead. Okay, yeah. This is huge for Lemon because now this dies. And then Fable is able to land perfectly safety. No fear of counter spells whatsoever. Lemon's in the driver's seat. One billion percent. Now, is there a temptation to just play Corpse Appraiser here at all? Yes. Yes, there is. But it's not but, strong enough. But that's right. <laughs> See, I, I don't know. I'd be like, I need to eat that. Whatever that is in the graveyard. I need to eat it before they do. You know, like, yeah, that's, so excited. that's a big temptation for sure. Although you're at risk of milling creatures that they'll be able to uh, eat, eat anyway. So sure. it's probably fine. Emma is now holding up counter magic, learning her lesson, going, all right, fine. I got you. Yes, we see. Uh, Fable going to loot away. It looks like a Brotherhood's End, and thinking about one of these lands, just the Brotherhood's End going to eat it, and we'll see Sundown pass the draw off of that loot. And here comes the Corpse Appraiser, and I say, no oh, way. There's the loot disappear. Immediately. Take yeah. a seat, Corpse Appraiser. We don't but take... That tiny new in the hand could be very vital. That Let is... cannot pass. Oh, sorry. No, you you were saying Lemon cannot. Uh, well, we'll have oh, to yeah. play the untapped attack Maya and it's, it's talk, excuse Taka me. Maya? Taka I know. Numa. I attacking Numa. I know. I just <laughs> I just ate my words a little bit there. So uh, I I was looking at. <laughs> so we see ooh. disdainful. Wow, disdainful stroke just 
fired off there. I, I, I like that saying, you know what? I don't like Urborg. So <laughs> Radaburek, going to have to take a seat. So Lemon is clearly playing the, I'm going to play things. And if you have an answer, you have to have it right now. Lemon is right. not waiting for uh, Emma to have something. So this black mana source is crucial. So, oh, absolutely. So good right now. That's spam, bam, draw a card. And it's Blood Blood Tide. Tide. Blood Tide mm -hmm. Harvester, a very good draw here. You know, that blood, that blood, those blood tokens matter a lot. You know, yes. being able to find the correct answers to what your Grixis opponent is playing is so important. Um, as we see Corpse Appraiser, speaking of finding answers, being able to look through, Radadrabrik is going to, uh-oh, that's three lands. You know, you could cycle the lounge if need be, but you kind of want to hold on to your utility lands in Ottawara. Um, yeah, and you have to you have to pretend you have a counter spell too. It's so risky to draw a card on the main phase here. Right. Oh, but she does it anyway. This Ooh. is that's a good Gixis command, but it may not be enough because Lemon is able to start popping off with that um uh, table. Right. Being able to copy Blood Tithe Harvester and just kill everything is great. And there is a Jaxus, the troublemaker, looking to make some trouble. Now it can't be copied with reflection, but Jaxus can definitely make some trouble. Yeah, and it's probably not a good idea to play Jaxus anyway, because it, it might overcommit to the board. And uh, well, I guess Jaxus Command is a one of, so I can't, it's not like we can say, oh, you should know. But oh, it's just blitzing it. Okay. That's interesting. So that's just attacking for two. Oh, no. Just drawing two cards. Okay. That's respectable. I like that. I kind of like that too. Getting a little damage in. Uh, I, I like the, the card draw, kind of needing to refuel. And what two cards could possibly refuel your hand better than Invoke Despair and Fable of the Mirror Breaker? Now we'll see this Gix's command is going to come down on Emma's side and take care of most of Lemon's board. All of Lemon's board, excuse me. But Emma's mm. got a shield and nothing else. And Lemon can just fire off and reload even more with this Invoke Despair, and that go for the throat was a huge draw to have an answer for Shieldred here. Oh, and a hearse. There's a hearse. Oh. It's running away. It is. It is. It's going to drift. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I don't know how you see the hearses particularly, <laughs> but... It's definitely just nice to have, I guess, if Emma plays another uh, Corpse Appraiser, it completely nullifies all of them. And you're right, that go for the throat is going to be hitting that Shieldred ASAP. Although, that's <laughs> Reckoner Bankbuster left. That is, that is a lot of Bankbusters. So, okay. uh, I guess Emma's just like, well, I guess I'll play a Bankbuster. <laughs> do you play a Bankbuster or do you play Bankbuster? That's the question. Right. Hmm. 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 <laughs> I'll stroke my imaginary beard that I don't have. <laughs> I was also stroking mine, so. <laughs> oh, very good. Oh, very I don't good. even know. Hmm. <laughs> so this corpse of praise is coming down. That's really clutch. What is it trying to find? It's probably trying to find more card advantage, to be honest. Ways to deal with those, uh, yeah, Exile Children. Ways to deal with that pilot token. Ways to deal with those bank busters. There's any Ganjo. Ganjo is okay. definitely interesting. Oh, Ganjo as a play. land to be yes. able to play a fable. I love it. I love it. I love it. Get that value out as Lemon is. And we see Soul Ooh. Transfer. Now, unfortunately, that at the moment, nice. yes, Emma That's does not cool. have the fable. So make well, disappear. I was actually going to say, barring the fact that what you're bringing up is true, like you can't get the double effect, but also Shieldred was just exiled by that appraiser, so there's no way that you're going to be able to get your Shieldred back. That is going to matter a lot. Yes, because Emma would have had se seven mana, which would have been just enough to play the soul transfer, bring back Shieldred, and play the Shieldred as well. So going to settle for exiling Corpse Appraiser here, and 
not gonna crew up uh, being at seven life feeling a little wary which i totally get so not wanting to get into the red zone there gonna draw a land but then quickly loot away two lands off of that fable of mirror breaker second chapter we'll see a braid and haunted ridge to join that unlicensed hearse in lemon's hand and there blooding it away yep. put it away three draws oh, okay that's really good <laughs> and one of the two shieldreds in oh sorry there there are four shieldreds in lemon's yes. list it's two in the main two the, in the side it's part of the combo you see if you get two shieldreds out that's four damage per card <gasps> whoa Ooh. so this crew is interesting oh that's a really risky crew so lemon is able to abrade in response oh no oh not gonna do totally it fine. not gonna do it all right no worries so Lemon could have abraded in response, and Emma would not have been able to crew or counter it because Make Disappear would not have done been enough permission. And um, but this also prevents the Bank Buster from tapping because it was just played. It can't use its ability. I think the right one to crew would have been the one without the counters on it. But then maybe Lemon would have just immediately cast a braid on it, and that would have been it. So. Mm -hmm. really playing around everything. There's extra treasure here. Make sure that Emma has to sacrifice the pilot. Yes. We want this to be gone. And it's worth it to Emma because being at seven life and have a shoulder in play feels really bad, especially when you know you don't have any other answer to it. All you got is this mate disappear. Yes. But since Emma's tapped out now, Lemon sees this as permission to play the hearse. Mm -hmm. if Lemon thinks that this is necessary. Yes. Maybe. As a good spot to play it. And both players empty-handed here. So it's been a very exciting game. And, you know, when Jeez. you need some cards, why not just Fable of the Mirror Breaker? Uh, we see a <laughs> land drawn off of Reckoner Bankbuster here. And Fable of the Mirror Breaker, gonna make a 2-2 Shaman. Uh, a land that is able to be blooded away but with only three available mana, Emma looks like she's going to hold on to that land for right now. All right. There goes some creatures. Yeah. Unlicensed Hurt's going to start doing some work here. Fable and Mirror Breaker flipping over both players, one card in hand. Both of them are lands. Let's see. It looks like Lemon's going to be the first one to start using these blood. To, and uh, it's another land. Oh. <laughs> That's rough. Mm. Okay. And Let's Emma see. does have another blood token too. Yes. But does not have to use it since that oh. fable is going to just another land. Oh. That's so many lands. I would so be so lands. mad right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can be mad for 11. So. <laughs> I would be like, come on. Just one. Oh, trading immediately. Yeah. You want to prevent that reflection from being see, able to get anywhere. I like salt counting my lands, where I count the ones in hand, and then I count all the ones I've looted away in my graveyard, and then I count all the ones I haven't played, and I go, well, I've played four, 13, four, 14 lands! This is ridiculous! Oh, yeah. you do the soft <laughs> calculations for, like, yes. the chances of drawing a land next is 30%. You draw land. Like, yes. Okay, 28% for another land. <laughs> and here we go, Emma is drawing lands, as yeah. we've been... Yeah. Yes. A land so, followed by a land, loot, get a land... But there Both is this cut down. Are, yeah, there's the cut down for that. So that Bing Buster is going to get in. That crew, I think, is fine, but it's a risk. Yes. Because we'll if Emma see. has more removal. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, Hearse is going is is going to crew. Um, so putting the Hearse out there, it's a little more vulnerable here. Uh is Lemon going to be willing to trade this 4-4 four, four hearse for a bank buster? They probably could be. Oh, if they weren't planning to block, then it may have been better to just keep it as a non-creature just in case Emma had another removal spell. Because you never know. But that's okay. I mean, it doesn't matter either way in this particular situation. It's just, you know, little things like that. 
That Fable's going to be flipping to soon as well. Copying Bankbuster to draw an extra card per turn is going to be really relevant. It's another land. Yeah, another land on the side of Lemon. This is tough. No, no way to no way to crew. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh, and there's a Kaido, so that's another. Kaido able to make a 1-1 one, one and can crew both bank busters that way, tapping the reflection and the 1-1, one, one, as well as the 1-1 one, one pilot, can crew both of the 4-4s. Four, if Emma decides to go that route, we will see. And it looks like Emma says, wow. you know what? I've got way too many lands in hand. I need a draw. I'm just going to discard my mountain. Like... And having go for the throat may be a better insurance policy and doesn't feel comfortable attacking into all of this open mana. Now, nope. I don't know that I can blame Emma for playing a little more cautiously here. Ooh, that's not a bad draw. That draws into something. But Emma's like waiting for that uh, Invoke Despair to land. Right. You don't want to get caught, caught short in a counter war either. So holding up like the sandal stroke, go for the throat, making sure to have mana to pay for make disappear and another corpse appraiser. <laughs> That's not bad. I mean, it's getting creatures and now that go for the throat's looking a little bit worse. Mm. Is there still a thing? There is still a thing to exile. My goodness gracious. Oh, and a and shielded. A oh my goodness. With enough mana to cast it. That's huge especially this unlicensed hearse is a 6-6 six, six right now and activated again it's gonna be an 8-8 eight, eight. yeah it's it's approaching that element of lethal now um but that reflection doesn't have so many sickness anymore either so both situations are gonna be relevant here yes and it's a land okay Kaido says drawing Another oh go for the throat. That's okay. a big draw. Sure. Here we go. No attack and passing the turn, but not before killing this corpse brazer. So yeah, we know have to. Yes. Needed to die. We know Shieldred in the hand of Lemon and Unlicensed Hearse gonna get a little bit bigger here. Uh, not not wanting to play the Shieldred without any mana up to be able to play around any sort of soft counters. So I like the patience there on the side of Lemon. And thinking about what to exile from the graveyards here, it looks like. I guess you have to ask, do you want to exile like every creature except for one, just in case you draw another Corpse Appraiser? Or do you just want to pitch all the creatures and take them all away? Oh, exile their own cards. That's interesting. That's now, maybe to stop your opponent's corpse prison? Hmm. Oh, Shieldred. Getting stroked. Bye-bye, Shieldred. Don't yeah, need that. That's, that's, that's why they play just stroke in this format, <laughs> for sure. Right. That's the reason. Counter, target, Shieldred. Got it. <laughs> counter, counter target invoke despair counter target wander counter target <laughs> sanctuary warden if you need to like there's just everything that blood token may be relevant here uh, being able to discard that land and drawing into more gas it's a harvester as well now Emma and now Emma is able to play um, double crew and it's second blood tip yeah so now oh, Emma boy. has the blood tip yes. that's really scary it's scary for so many reasons. Besides the fact that Emma can now filter through her draws, she can kill everything, obviously, on the side of Lemon. So it's definitely scary, definitely dangerous. Make disappear. Not doing too much in this stage of the game. Blood Tithe Harvester going to kill the Blood Tithe Harvester on Lemon's side. We'll see. It looks like Unlicensed Hearse is going to be crude as an 8-8. So, you know, That's don't really good. want to attack with that. I mean, into that. <laughs> Emma is biding her time, basically waiting for Lemon to draw and play no creatures. Because up until this point, Lemon has been able to crew fair uh, hearse. But this draw may be it. 
Ooh. Underground River. Oh, no. Are there any wandering emperors in the 75 for Lemons list? I don't um, think there are, right? Unfortunately, are. no, there are not. Splashing no... White, there's Void Wrens and the, the uh, Radadravic. Radadravic. Radadravic, yes. But that sounds not... like the lyrics to Darude Sandstorm. <laughs> <laughs> But just, <laughs> <all right. laughs> just going to get in for one with the unblockable ninja. Uh, so Emma's still playing very conservatively over here, you know, not wanting to s screw anything up, saying, you know what, I, I'm dominating on the board right now. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to do this right. Drawing oh the God. fourth Reckoner Bankbuster here. That's a lot of card draw for Emma this game. A lot of card draw. Speaking of so a lot of card draw. <laughs> well, I mean, listen. Every single card in Emma's deck does some amount of card advantage. Card advantage. Wow. Okay. Talking. Card advantage stuff. I think Emma's trying really hard to play around Brotherhood's End. Because keeping Kaido above three is really vital here. Because then you can make sure that Kaido sticks around. Similar things can happen if you're like, oh, keeping that land in the hand, by the way, to not be able to pay for Make Disappear... That is a feel bad moment. I've been there before. Right. Could... This late in the game, and you're like, I have 14 lands in play. There's no way that the last card in hand is make disappear, and it just always is. Because you want to hold on to the land to loot away with Fable. So you're just like, nah, there's no way. There's no way. And you play, and you're like, there is a way. Ooh. <laughs> we have one half of the combo, baby. It's half. Yes. Optic Jax's next turn. Oh, wait. That's right. Because the Harvester kills. Radadrabic next turn, unfortunately. Radadrabric. I don't want to ever have to say it. Radadrabric. Radadrabic. Urborg person. That's Urborg person. <laughs> the Urborg wizard. Zombie wizard. The Urborg wizard. <laughs> it's a warlock. Oh, and there's Urtai. Ward 2 Urtai to take care of Anything else, I suppose, that Lemon may be able to draw into at this point. Even though you do get a card draw off of Urtai if it destroys your thing or counters your thing. Still doesn't feel that great. We see Unlicensed Hearse geared oh, up here as a 12-12, but uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah, Emma was extremely patient this game. Yes. She was basically waiting for the exact opportunity to be like, you have no way to do anything to me anymore. Zero. That was what she was waiting for this whole time. And it's paying off. It's yes. clearly paying off. We see it. Crewing up these bank busters, getting things all ready, saying, you know, Lemon's got six open mana here. Gonna get in for lethal and... Oh, no, not going to get in for lethal. Excuse me. Going to keep back the reflection. I like, I like it. I mean, I think this is just in case there's a copy of, I don't even know what Emma is playing around at this point, but maybe like one single removal spell, just in case. There are void runs and things like that in the deck. So it's definitely Ooh. possible. Brotherhood's end. Yikes. Oh my god. If that was there like three turns ago, it probably would have been extremely good for Lemon. But being right now, it's kind of... It's good. It's fine. Um, but that Bing Buster is going to keep coming in whether you like it or not. Right. Get ready to get Bing Busted. I mean, the magic number is four right now. Lemon Cassidy at four life. These bank busters are four fours. We see Make Disappear and Xander's Lounge. There are plenty of draws and redraws here on Emma's side. Shieldred would be one of them. Yes, Shieldred is game here because you can play two creatures and crew up two bank busters. And or with it should be game unless Emma thinks that Lemon has even more interaction. But Arena seems to disagree. Yes. Arena's doing the thing where your spells immediately <laughs> resolve when you play them. It's just like, yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're good. So, and we see the go for the throat 
or uh, soul transfer here to be able to take care of the single blocker on Lemon Cassidy's side. Uh, and it looks like it will be the go for the throat. Will be taken down. And... Oh, it's a gonjo. Emma's playing around a gonjo. That's what it is. A gonjo. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That just occurred to me. I was like, that's what it is. That's why yes. she's not attacking, even though the arena is telling her that... Yes, because there would be no pause for Iganjo, so. That's a really good Void Rend for sure. Oh. Uh, Fable, well, it's kind of one card. 100%, and another Fable. So this puts two blockers into play. Uh, Lemon Cassidy is at two. These, Kaido does make one one unblockables, and it would be a two turn clock that Lemon would have to use a, a full removal spell on. We'll see Reckon or Bankbuster drawing another card, and it's another land on the side of Emma, but making a pilot here, able to draw a card, happy to loot something away. It looks like Sulphur Springs can hit the bin, and Corpse Appraiser was the draw, so another uh, card that could crew. Lemon Cassidy with no cards in hand. Emma doing some quick math, saying I can Takanuma back uh, Shieldred, and get yes. the final two damage in that way and not even have to attack. So not having to worry about that, but may attack anyway. I guess we will see. It looks I like... I want to just know how many cards are left in Lana's deck at this point. Right, I want to know how many... Now, remember, this game started at the Mulligan of 5 and a Mulligan of 6. So this was quite a game from both of our players. But ultimately, yeah. Emma's going to take that one down a two gifts and an over Lemon Cassidy. So, uh, Lemon, I really enjoyed the deck. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, I always like when people uh, bring their brews, especially, you know, the playoffs and with so much on the line. Like, it's definitely an admirable thing. And I love the deck. Four color zombie combo. And obviously, congratulations to Emma, who was our second seed overall at 7 and 0 this season. So, uh, taking it down with Grixis mid range, so just impressive showing from either side. Impressive showing from all of our players tonight in the top thirty-two. All of you that are moving on to the top sixteen next week, congratulations! Um, but it has been one one heck of a week, kicking off the new year, kicking off the VML season eight playoffs. Don't forget, there's a lot on the line this season. We are sponsored by Wizards of the Coast and GLHF, and uh, they have both made general generous contributions to our league. We have a, a, a huge prize pool and a cash prize pool. And besides that, the big thing is invites. Well, you can fight your way to local regional championships and the pro tour. We also are having a, a VML championships at the end of this year. There are, we are, we have already announced we have, Three seasons on the dock. We have season eight. Season nine will be happening this spring. Season 10 will be happening over the summer. And we're going to have a VML championships this summer slash fall. So super excited for that. Uh, it's going to be an invitation to the Pro Tour, two invitations to the Pro Tour at our VML championships at the end of the year. So that's super exciting. A lot of great stuff. A lot of big things on the line. I absolutely love being a part of all this. I'm so excited to see our players do so great bring such amazing awesome decks thank you for not making us cover grixis mid-range all night like i said i'm actually a grixis mid-range player myself but uh y'all are great so <laughs> i mean i think it really does it it does attest to the fact that grixis mid-range is the deck to be i don't think grixis mid-range the only grixis mid-range that lost tonight was the one that was in the mirror where one would have had to lose at some point um if you're playing in this season you and you're not playing Grixis mid-range and you want to try to beat Grixis mid-range, you better make sure that you have something for it and for all the different variations of it and really understand what makes it tick and all of the different things that um, lead it to wins. Um, that's really it. Just be very careful because <laughs> if you can't beat it, it's going to beat you. And that's kind of everything. As you saw, it was half the, half the group in this week. It may be more next week, depending on how people do this week. Right. And it definitely is unforgiving. But like you said, looking forward to the top 16 next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. 
uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you're following us here on Twitch, twitch.tv slash VMLMTG. Give us a follow on Twitter at VMLMTG and look us up on YouTube at VMLMTG. We also have an amazing community on Discord. So uh, you could join us there, uh, exclamation point VML in chat if you want more information on how to join the VML in future seasons. A huge thanks again to our sponsors, both Wizards of the Coast and GLHF. Good luck. High five. Uh, Megan and Maria, you two are the bomb diggity. I love you both. Uh, big thanks to our admin team, all the behind the scenes uh, people, all of our a team of casters, the co-chairs, everybody working behind the scenes doing great a big thanks to our players tonight a huge thanks to our viewers here and as always i love to finish up with thanking the most wonderful producer that we could possibly ask for that is so amazing that obs blew up twice because of her amazingness phoebe we adore you we love you thank you for all of the hard work that you do and uh well. Yes. <laughs> uh, here's the funny thing. You said you guys didn't want to deal with more Grixis midrange, but I've got like six hours queued up. So are you guys sticking around? Should I order some pizza or something? I don't know. Yes. Are we getting overtime or? <laughs> oh, that you can't. That you can't ask me that. <laughs> Malkuro, it's been a pleasure if there's anybody you would like to shout out. But as always, it has been a pleasure casting with you once again, uh, kicking off yeah. this season eight playoffs. Yay! <laughs> oh, it's so fun casting with you. Absolutely. I had a great time. Thank you for having me. Oh, but thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank so you for thank making you for having me. Oh, <laughs> thank you for making this night so flavorful, my friends. And we will catch you all next week.